I just realized that I've been learning or been practicing programming with Dart for more than a year now. It's been around 13 months since I started working with the Dart and Flutter. And obviously all of you guys know because of a lot of content that we're putting in this channel for Dart and Flutter. So I just realized that the Dart programming language it's, itself is a completely different programming language in terms of the mainstream programming languages like Java, JavaScript and Python. So I wanted to make sure that in this video that you guys understand six super cool awesome stuff that are actually available with Dart which you should definitely know about and you're going to be having a blast learning about all of them in this video so if you're ready why wait because let's get this video started right away awesome so the first thing that i wanted to share is something that is actually super cool with dart is the concept of futures now everybody has a little bit of understanding of what a threading does in any programming language take python java there is something a bit related to in terms of something called a threading or thread that runs almost in every programming languages so what exactly do, does the thread or your multiprocess do they instead of depending on a say a single uh, thread for doing all the work they actually separate the work into multiple different threads that run on a single processor or a multiprocessor and perform all these different actions on the programming language well with respect to dart in particular dart actually depends on the concept of futures now dart also has different concepts called isolates which i'll be talking about in the end of this video but for the start of this video the future is actually a super cool thing that is actually available uh, from the dart actually every every language that you see right now having the concept of futures has been picked up from dart because the future concept uh, says that you can do any action is asynchronously meaning that you don't have to wait for something uh, in the future rather just call it a future action and just leave it at that and that the vm or the compiler automatically takes care of handling all these future actions which is super super cool now with respect to futures alone you have two different actions or the two different keywords that will actually help you in handling futures properly the first one is called as the async operator which when you mark a method with say for example i'm marking this method as a async operator you are actually saying to the uh, compiler that I'm going to be calling a future off on this method here so make sure that you don't wait for this answer or wait for a response from this method uh, in the future so make sure that you don't wait for it infinitely on the main thread rather just leave it to the compiler to take care of handling it in the future the next next one is actually the await operator which actually is nothing but a way to call an async method now when you call an await on a future method you're just telling the variable or whatever you're assigning the response from a method to saying that there is going to be some answer for this method in the future the answer could even be a void or null but still you're going to be waiting for that method to respond so that's what the operators await and async do on a future of future method so that's been super cool about the dart framework that i found useful for not just with dart the flutter is completely dependent on the future operator in a lot of different areas like we've been seeing for in, in terms of your uh, circular list loader or even you see a lot of different builders depending on a future so that's what is super cool about dart and their concept of asynchronicity so that's what is super cool about Flutter and Dart in particular because at the heart of the compiler of Dart it depends or the completely puts the weight on the compiler to do all the work in terms of its AOT and JIT and that's what is super cool again the first point I wanted to make sure in this video. Awesome the second thing that I found out with a Dart was the concept of runes. Now I didn't know I didn't want even it to be as part of this list of things that I found super cool in Dart. But one thing that I found it really interesting was the use of runes or the concept of runes where you can give a UTF-16 encoded string. Now, a lot of different languages support only a UTF-8 encoded string. Now, what does a UTF-8 encoded string do? At the max, you can, you can actually give support for say a different character like this and you cannot actually give a character or an emoji like this in your application or in your website or whatever programming languages you are using rather you have to depend on your third party plugin or additional plugins to make sure that you can actually show a utf-16 character in your application or in your programming language in dart specific you can actually see the concept of runes where you can actually show an emoji like this in your application with just a simple string so just call it as a string and you can actually show it in your application with just nothing else to do so 
that's what is again super really really cool about dart is that they thought about the concept of emojis way back when they released the 2013 version of dart itself so it's been there from then and nobody know, knew about it and nobody talked about it until recently when everybody wanted to put emojis in their application and the compilers couldn't do so so they had to depend on third party plugins and they had to depend on third party libraries to do so again with dart it's actually at the core so you don't have to worry about plugins or you, are, you don't have to worry about emojis just include them as a normal string in your application and very much good to go this may not be a very cool thing that you might consider but constructs, constructors have been around for a long long time way back from the C period when C, C++ programming period constructors have been there for a long long time but with respect to Dart constructors in particular that I found out very very useful was the syntactic sugar or the way you write a constructor is very very minimal you don't have to worry about the constructors you don't have to worry about giving a constructor to a class also by default there is also a simple null void constructor which means that it's not going to take any argument it's going to not going to return anything and it's going to just create a simple empty constructor in the in its place so every class is by default has an empty constructor but if you go to create a constructor it's going to be very very simple that is not going to be a complex uh, stuff associated with that with respect if you, if you take an example of a python you have to be very very sure of what constructor you are creating that is a constructor that could actually completely ruin your entire class if it's not created properly but with dart it's not so it's very simple again the syntactic sugar is very very for straightforward don't have to worry about anything you have to worry about just put on put out the class variables like i'm showing here and you're very much good to go so that's the very that's that's what i found out very very interesting and easy to do so with dart and that's going to be my third point in this list of six super cool things for the next fourth point that I want to discuss about Dart was that the concept of interoperability which is extremely extremely good with Dart. Right again I made a video previously to this video where I talked about why Dart is actually super cool and will it compare with Python and also I talked about a bit of history of Dart. So as the history of Dart goes we actually find that the initial Dart team days in 2013 when Dart was actually released by Google the main aim was to actually replace the JavaScript language. But it could not succeed in that in that project, but rather it ended up becoming a failure for Google. So that's that's the history of Dart. But come 2018, when they actually released the 2.5 version of Dart, it was actually a huge success for a lot of different things because people people could actually play with a different uh, syntactic sugar. They could actually look at a different compiler itself, and most importantly, they had in their hands the most powerful dart to js compiler so what it actually did was it's actually taking the transpiler what it would do is it will convert your dart code into a simple javascript code and that was actually a huge hit back then 2018 when they came out of the 2.5 release it was actually a huge huge hit and people started talking about good things about dart and they actually understood why javascript was a very very heavy language to write it was actually not a very easy language to write again by any developer. It had a lot of different things, it had a lot of different standards and it had different transpilers between their own versions which was not so good. So in Dart came into existence and it had a super cool Dart to JS transpiler. But that is actually with respect to JavaScript. Come the 2.5 version of Dart, they brought in the Dart FFI which is nothing but a C interoperability where you can actually convert your Dart code into simple C code that is actually superb cool. So that's what actually came out as existence for the 2.5 above releases. So even the 2.6 Dart FFI is in, in a bit of feedback mode right now. They still have a lot of cool interoperability techniques that are actually putting out in Dart and that's what is actually making this language very very, very strong. You still need not worry about Dart being running on a website because it's going to have a Dart to JS compiler there. You don't have to worry about Dart running in a simple say a low machine level language because it's going to have a Dart FFI converter working to convert it to simple C code and that's what is going to be the success of Dart as well in the going coming days. So that's what is my fourth point again it's a very very cool interoperability transpilers that they have in store inside the Dart VM itself. Alright the last the fifth point that I wanted to make sure was the concept of isolates which I told I'll be talking about. In, in, in terms of isolates, I did not still get a good grip of what isolates do, but I did understand that there is a different, completely different understanding 
or where the dart works now any any language that you take for example take a javascript you take java you take your python every all these languages have one thing in common which is the concept of multi processing they don't worry about how much your processor is doing rather they can make sure that they contribute to every single core of a processor and they make sure that the core of the processor share the same memory these are called as heap memory and uh, what dart does differently is that instead of actually making sure a same uh, heap memory is being used by multiple processors they are actually giving a separate heap memory per process and they're calling isolates now every program in dart runs with a simple isolate which has its own core which has its own processor and its own heap memory so that there is no confusion between what processor is going to access what memory and it's going to simply run super super fast yes it does require a little bit of more space and more memory and also does definitely require multiple cores but actually a success of the multi core architecture which is actually happening right now with your 9 gen technology and even your amd ryzen technology the multi core processors are becoming very very easy to access and that's going to be the main main reason why isolates are a huge huge success with dart and 2.6 and 2.7 have proven that they are actually going to be very very useful all right yeah almost at the end of this video i'm going i'm going to be making the sixth point which i find is very very useful for dart to work and the cool thing about dart is the journey from jit compiler to the current aot compiler which actually took almost 6 years for them to uh, for them create now i i did watch this video by this russian programmer who worked with dart i'm really sorry because i cannot pronounce his name but this russian programmer actually explains everything in clear in his 40 minutes video that i watched it is a really, really superb video to watch if you guys are free i'll just definitely put that in the description below make sure you check that video out but in this 40 minutes of video that the the programmer talks about what did take them from a say a jit compiler which was the concept of just in time compilation to the current ahead of time compilation which is nothing but a super cool super fast compiler that dart is currently working on you don't have to worry about how you 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 have to see the speed of dart to actually understand what i'm why i'm very much stressing on this point the ahead of time compilation is actually working currently with respect to the flutter's latest release so you can see that you can render 120 frames per second animations just like that that's the super power of the current uh, dart aot compiler J, J, from the journey of jit which is nothing but the usual ast compiler but with respect to some uh, maybe some optimization happening which is the jit that, that they call back then the current aot compiler which is actually a very much futuristic technology at this point of time you can see that the journey has been really really good and that's what makes the dart programming language a very very super cool programming language for the current 2020 All right, so I made a point clear here. I've actually talked to you guys about all the six cool things that are actually available with Dart in 2020. It's going to be a great year for Dart for sure. Make sure you check my video out on the previously when I released about the Dart versus Python. What will happen for Dart in 2020? Because obviously you guys loved that, and I'm going to be continuing to make videos on Dart in the coming days. Make sure this guys subscribe to the channel and stay up to date with your Dart and Flutter content because I've got a lot of videos coming out in this channel shortly. So. Make sure you do that. Let me meet in the next video. Until then, it's part of peace. So have a super awesome day.